Welcome to the Nobel interview, Professor François Jacob. Uh, you have written earlier that the Nobel Prize has changed your life not only in a positive way, you also realized that it uh, put some kind of burden on your back. You know, the, 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 the group we, we had in, in the Pasteur Institute with Wolf Mono and several people was rather unknown of the French public. The, we had a lot of uh, foreign students, of American students, British, German, and so on and so forth, but very few French students. That is, the group was uh, ignored of the French authorities and French universities. And suddenly, at uh, one certain Thursday at noon, the news arrived that you were awarded the prize, and it was like a wave. I mean, all the newspaper, all the TV, which were around in Paris, just came there, and it was just like a wave you, you received in full face. So, uh, and then from being completely unknown, we became too much known uh, very rapidly. And it's a bit difficult for a time to uh, face this situation, but you, you, you finally can do it. So what happened? So what happened that we go on working and it has also positive things in the sense that you can more easily get support for your work, that you can more easily get good students and so forth. So you have good side and bad side on this, of course. Yeah. You are not only unknown, you are also kind of hidden in the attic also, of the yeah, Pasteur right. Institute. The, the, the attic was... Uh, Lvov uh, made some very important discovery before the war, and uh, he was made uh, head of a department in the Pasteur Institute, and a department which was created for him, which was bacterial physiology, and he was given this attic uh, on one of the buildings of, of the Pasteur Institute. And that's where I arrived after the war. I knew nothing in science. Uh, I, I had been wanting to, to do surgery, and I was very heavily wounded, and I had a bad arm and bad leg, so I couldn't do surgery. And I tried to, to be an actor, I tried to do journalism, I, I did a lot of things. And finally, I tried to go into science, but as I said, I knew nothing in science, and I decided that I gave me five years. Either I find something in five years, or I do something else. And when, but, when was it? But this was in 1950. But the point is that I, I learned that there was two good labs in Paris, and one which was nicer than the other, and the nicer one was the one which was headed by Lvov and in which Mono was working. So at the Pasteur Institute, and it was already at the Pasteur Institute, and I went and saw Lvov and asked him what I could work with him, with him. And he said, no, I have no room. And for a year, I came every month asking him whether I could work with him. And finally, he was so fed up with me that he said yes. <laughs> and this was in, uh, in the middle of 1950, yes. Mm. So you ended up on this attic. So I ended up on this attic, and the attic was very interesting because there was it was a long corridor. Uh, at one pole there was Wolf and his group, at the other was Mono and his group. And in the middle, people were always meeting, talking, discussing, trying to uh, to put down the experiment of the other and criticizing each other. It was extremely lively and extremely active. And in, in this attic, uh, a large number of, of foreign people, as I said, was coming every year. So it was a fantastic, fantastically uh, intellectually living place. Yeah, and you had also many contacts with the American scientists. Yes, there, there was many American scientists mm. coming, either uh, professor for sabbatical year or postdoc uh, students. Mm. And you used also to go to no, I, Cold I Spring went, Harbor, no? I, yes, I went to Cold Spring I was I went to Cold Spring Harbor for the first time in nineteen fifty three. And I, and it was very interesting. It was very I mean the students and the whole atmosphere was very different from what was existing in France. In what way? 
that the, 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 the students were always in France, uh, when the, the professor had said something, the students said, okay, well, good, very good. And in the States, it was very different. They were criticizing uh, strongly the, the professor and uh, arguing with them. It was a very different climate, mm. but, but very um, interesting. Yeah. And, and we, uh, w when we went there in the States, we tried to import in, in Europe, uh, in France, in a way, the American way of, of teaching and all this, yes. D did you succeed with that? Partly. Mm -hmm. Not completely, but partly. Yeah. How, how do you remember Jacques Monod and André Elvoff as a person? Well, they were very different from each other. André Elvoff, uh, André Elvoff was some kind of an artist. Uh, actually, he, he liked also to paint, and he painted a lot. And he had the intuition of the important problems. He, and he, when he started with a certain scientific problem, he went deeply in. But when he arrived at a certain success and a certain uh, uh, discovery, then he stopped and he changed and went to another uh, problem. And he changed, I don't know, four or five times in his life, and every time very successfully, going from... Uh, He started with the vitamins, and he explained what vitamins was. Then he came to uh, to viruses and bacteriophage, showing that the, the genes of a virus can become part of a bacterial gene chromosome. Then he turned to uh, other viruses, so he changed a lot of them. Mono was the, completely the, the opposite. He started in one problem which was his, his doctoral thesis, and he went on all his life going deeper and deeper on, on this particular problem. So they were completely different, but extremely good friends. Mm. And you were the third one, I would say, in this trio, the well, youngest yeah. one. And yes. what, what kind of scientist are you? Well, I, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I was in the middle. I worked with Wolf. I, I, I finally, after this, what I said, that I going every every month to him, uh, he finally he said, uh, he told me one day, you know, you have found the induction of the prophage. I said, oh, I was in a very admirative way, but I didn't understand a word of what he was saying. No. And when <laughs> I came out of that, I just went to a library and tried, and I couldn't find out what the prophage or induction of the prophage was. Finally, I, I understood later on. But I told him, I, I am dying to do that with you. <laughs> and so he accepted me and I began to, to work there. Mm -hmm. So I work with him and he, 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 my, my thesis with him. But I, w after that, I worked with uh, Eli Volman, who was just a little bit uh, older than I was. And we work on the genetics of bacteria and we were able to analyze the whole genetic system, the, the way bacteria can copulate. It was a, a system which had been found by Josh Lederberg, and we analyzed in detail. But once we had this system in hand, it was clear that we, it was a fantastic tool to analyze any function of the bacterial cell. So it turned out that it was important for the, the, the kind of problem that Mono was investigating, which was how uh, the production, the, the, the genes, activity, respond to environment, that our system of bacterial copulation was a very good tool to analyze that. So I turned to, and worked with, with Mono at that time. And it turned out the very funny thing is that Mono was working at one side on, on, on enzyme synthesis, and Wolf was working on viruses. And it turned out that the, the, the system were extremely extremely similar, extremely alike, and then you could make a general model of the way gene activity is regulated by using either system. That, that was my, my role, to be in between and to put the two things together. Yeah, in one corridor. In one corridor. <laughs> uh, you did also write about the way science works, and you used this, these words that there is 
the, you can divide science in two parts. One is day science and one is night science. That's right. Can you elaborate a bit on yes. that? Yes. When you look at, at books, or you look at papers, people are right, you find that science is a nice, uh, nice street that you can go from one point to another in a very uh, classical way, in a very profound way. But I don't think it's the way science do. In fact, <coughs> uh, by night, when you are in your bed and you don't sleep, you wonder what, what you are doing, you hesitate to do this, is, is, is what I do reasonable. And, and you just, it just, uh, it has nothing to do with the habitual description of the glory that you have uh, uh, Jardin à la Française, where you can walk. It's, it's very different from that. And that's what I call day science which is uh, the finished science, once what you look in the books, and the night science, which is the actual way when you fight with everything and, and wonder uh, and, and being sure to be wrong. Mm -hmm. But you were right. Do you remember? Sometimes and right. <laughs> <laughs> You were. <laughs> uh, this time in science where you entered it in the 50s, this was really a time of revolution in biology. Yes. How, how do you view the development of biology since then? Well, th there are two points which are important, I think. One, one was that going on with the, the, the success of the beginning of molecular biology was to work with bacteria <coughs> and, and viruses, because it was very simple. You could analyze very simply, you could find a lot of mutants, you could make a lot of combinants, you could go to the genetic material itself, find out how it works. That was very nice and extremely successful. But when we wanted to apply these techniques to high organism, actually, we are interested in our cells, finally. Uh, you couldn't do that. And what it became possible through uh, genetic engineering. And genetic engineering came out in the beginning of the 70s. It came out, it, 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 it happened that you could isolate DNA, sequence DNA, uh, pick up a gene, uh, look at the presence of a gene, put in in a different uh, <coughs> organism or bacteria. You could do a lot of things. And then this gave access to higher organisms. And then it became possible, that was essentially at the 70s, and it became possible at the beginning of the 80s to tackle another absolutely fundamental problem of biology, which is the embryonic development. That is, how does it happen that you, you take a sperm cell, an egg cell, put them together, you have an egg, and this gives two cells, four cells, eight cells, and this gives the you or me, and that, that's really the most fantastic problem uh, you, you can imagine, that you have this four cell, eight cell, and then you have a small part which happens, which, which becomes distinct, uh, a group of cells which is going to give the brain with which you, you learn to talk, to write, to, uh, to come to, to Stockholm or to, to, to go through the street. And this was really the, one of the big mysteries. And it was impossible to handle seriously before this genetic engineering was possible. <coughs> and this we have learned a lot, and we have learned incredible things, which things which were completely incredible 20 years ago. For instance, that the, the same genes which make the plan of, a, of an insect, of a, of a drosophila, of a, a fly, the same gene makes the plan for a human being or a mouse or, or a worm. This was just impossible to believe 20 years ago. Yeah, so and this. yeah, here we are. And here we are, mm -hmm. yes. Probably there will be more extraordinary things in the coming years. Can you see something that will come? No, Can you speculate I, on that? If, if, I, I, no, I, mean, I am not Madame Soleil. In France, we have a very famous <laughs> predictor who is called Madame Soleil, Mrs. Sun. And she said anything, you can say n'importe quoi. Okay. Uh, but you're, if, you, if you make prediction, you're sure to be wrong. Okay. That's the only thing you can say. But can, can, Except one thing, that probably the brain will be the main, because the brain is the hmm. thing which knows the less still. 
and probably this will be the main object of the coming year. Well, this is very interesting. Thank you for taking your time and sharing your thoughts with us.